Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Continue reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto, 12, uh, Canto 4, Chapter 12. We are on text 5. Tad Kacha Dhruva Bhadram Te. Tad Kacha Dhruva Bhadram Te. Bhagavantam Adhokshajam. Sarvabhutatma Bhavena Sarvabhutatma Bhavena Sarvabhutatma Vigraham Sarvabhutatma Vigraham Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamishnam Prabhupada My dear Dhruva, come forward. May the Lord always grace you with good fortune. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is beyond our sensory perception, is the super soul of all living entities. And thus all living, all entities are one without distinction. Therefore begin rendering service unto the transcendental form of the Lord, who is the ultimate shelter of all living entities. So here, Kuvair, this is Kuvair is talking to Dhruva because he is satisfied that Dhruva stopped fighting and then he's giving his blessings to Dhruva. Here the word Vigraham having a specific form is very significant for it indicates that the absolute truth is ultimate, the supreme personality of Godhead. So Bhagavatam says that the transcendentalist Vedanti Tattattva does. They understand uh, the absolute truth in three features, Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavaniti, Shabdayate. Uh, they are able to understand the absolute creatures as Brahman, Paramatma, and as the Supreme Lord, as a person. So some may understand the absolute truth or God as, as the Brahman. Some may understand the Supreme Lord as Paramatma, but the complete understanding is that he's a person. Ultimately, this is what he's writing, is ultimately the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is explained in the Brahma Samhita. Sachidananda Vikraha, he has form, but his form is different from any kind of material form. Now we may think that form means material because in our experience, Whatever we are seeing is material. So we are seeing form. And so we think that any form is material. But what we have to understand is this material form is a reflection of what? It's a reflection of the spiritual form. There is the truth in the spiritual world. The truth is in the spiritual world. The reality is in the spiritual world. So there is a spiritual form. Lord Brahma in the Brahma Samhita, he is saying, Satchidananda Vigraha. Krishna has a form which is transcendental, a spiritual form. The living entities are the marginal energy of the Supreme Form. As such, they are not different from the Supreme Form, but at the same time, they are not equal to the Supreme Form. So we are one and different. How are we one? We are part and parcel. So in quality, we are also Satchidananda. But quantity is different. Krishna is unlimited. We are minute. Dhruv Maharaj is advised here with to render service unto the Supreme Form. That will include service to other individual forms. So Kuvair is telling him that you serve Krishna. He's not telling him you serve anything, you imagine anything and you serve him. Or you imagine any demigod to be God and you serve him. No, he's saying you serve the form of the Lord. He's very specific. And by serving God, we are serving all other individual entities. We don't need to separately serve them. By serving Krishna, we are serving everyone. For example, a tree has a form and when water is root, or poured on the root of the tree, the other forms, the leaves, twigs, flowers, and fruits are automatically watered. 
the Mayavad conception that because the absolute truth is everything, he must be formless is rejected here. Rather, it is confirmed that the absolute truth has form and yet he's all pervading. Nothing is independent of him. So someone may say, oh, but because God is omnipresent, then how can he have a form? He's all pervading. So how come he has a form? But we have to understand he's omnipotent too. He has these wonderful, wonderful energies. And that's how he's all pervading. And yet he's a person, localized person, and he's living in Vaikuntha, in the spiritual world. So this is what Kubir is trying to tell to Dhruva Maharaj also, that you render service unto Krishna, unto the personal form of Krishna. We cannot see him with our material senses. He's saying who's beyond our sense perception. Why? Because the form of Krishna is spiritual. We right now, we don't have the spiritual eyes to see him. And that Krishna is the ultimate shelter of all living entities. We may think that we have so many shelters. You know, we may, we, we, have, we may depend on our our own strength, our mind, our intelligence. We may depend on our wealth. We may depend on our beauty or we may depend on our family. But the ultimate shelter, the ultimate shelter is Krishna. Vajaswa bhajani yan karim Engage yourself fully, therefore, in the devotional service of the Lord. For only he can deliver us from this entanglement of materialistic existence. Although the Lord is attached to his material potency, he is aloof from her activities. Everything in this material world is happening by the inconceivable potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the continuation of the previous verse, it is specifically mentioned here that Dhruv Maharaj should engage himself in devotional service. So Kuvera here is instructing Dhruv Maharaj. As Narad Muni had also told him, you engage in devotional service. Here Kuvera is also telling him, you engage in devotional service. Devotional service cannot be rendered to the impersonal Brahman feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Whenever the word bhajasva appears, meaning engage yourself in devotional service, there must be the servant, service and the servant. So bhajaswa, engage in devotional service. And when we are saying engage in devotional service, means there's someone who's engaging the service. So that's the servant. Then there is the service itself. And there is someone who's being served. These three factors are there. So we cannot serve the, the Brahman. How can we serve the Brahman? We get devotional service begins by hearing and chanting. You know, so with the Brahman, what do we hear about the Brahman? What do we chant about the Brahman? But we can hear and chant about Krishna, about the person. The Supreme Personality of God has served. The mode of activities to please him is called service. And one who renders such service is called the servant. So by the, the devotional servants, we are rendering unto God. So he is the servant. And we are rendering the service. And then the person who is rendering the service is called the servant. Another significant feature in this verse is that only the Lord and no one else is to be served. That is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Mame kam sharanam raja. Krishna is also saying that in Bhagavad Gita. Aham tuam sarvapa. Mam ekam sharanam raja. Just come to me. Just surrender unto me. 
Krishna is not saying you surrender unto this one or that one or unto Paramatma or to the Brahman. No, Krishna is saying you surrender unto me. He's standing in front of Arjuna and this is what he's saying. So there is no need to serve the demigods who are just like the hands and legs of the Supreme Lord. When the Supreme Lord is served, the hands and legs of the Supreme Lord are automatically served. There is no need of separate service. So what's the position of the demigods? Anyone? They are like the agents mm -hmm. who work under his his uh, will. Mm -hmm. and, and then, so then why no need to separately worship now? We don't need to worship them because they have their individual posts. So when we when we worship the Supreme Lord, so automatically the demigods are being also uh, also worshipped, right? Worshipped, yeah. yeah. Yeah, by worshipping Krishna, we are automatically worshipping all the demigods. It's included. When the Supreme Lord is served, the hands and legs of the Supreme Lord are automatically served. There is no need of separate service. So as the demigods are the hands and legs of the Lord, then when we are serving the Lord, the demigods are included. They automatically, the worship is being done. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 12.7, Tesham aham samudhar, samudharta mrityu samsara sagara. This means that the Lord, in order to show specific favor to the devotee, directs the devotee from within in such a way that ultimately he is delivered from the entanglement of material existence. No one but the Supreme Lord can help the living entity to be delivered from the entanglement of this material world. So if we at all want to get out of this material world, Krishna can take us out of the material world. We have to turn to Krishna. He's called Mukunda, the giver of liberation. Bhagavatam says, even if we want liberation, we serve, uh, engage in devotional service to Krishna. Krishna can bring us out. So Krishna, he directs us. He's the Paramatma in our heart and he's giving us the direction. If someone has a desire to get out of the material world, Krishna as Paramatma in the heart gives the direction by which the living entity can get out of the material world. It's like, for example, the someone is there in a very dark maze, cannot see anything. But there's a lot of obstacles. But there is someone higher who can see the obstacles and keeps telling him, hey, you turn right, turn left. You're going to bump into something here. You're going to bump into something there. And just by hearing him, this person can get out of the maze. And this is how it is. Krishna is guiding us. We are not able to see because of our ignorance. But Krishna is guiding us. As the Paramatma. No one but the Supreme Lord can help the living entity be delivered from the entanglement of this material world. The material energy is a manifestation of one of the Supreme Personality of Godhead's varieties of potencies. Parasya Shakti Vividheva Shruyate. So Krishna has many, many energies. But his energies are broadly divided into three. Does anyone know which are these three energies? The superior energy, the marginal energy, and the inferior energy. So which is the superior energy? The internal energy of Krishna, Radharani. Then the marginal energy, uh, us, 
uh, energy and the inferior energy is the external energy, the material energy. Thank you. So this material energy is one of the Lord, Lord's potencies as much as heat and light are potencies of fire. So we see fire, fire as heat and light. That's the quality of fire. Right? So the Lord has many potencies and one of the potencies is the material energy. The material energy is not different from the Supreme Godhead, but at the same time, he has nothing to do with the material energy. That's why she's called his separated energy. He does not personally associate with her. The living entity who is of the marginal energy is entrapped by the material energy on the basis of his desire to lord it over the material world. So we are the pure souls. Then why are we here in this material world? Because we have forgotten our our, our nature. Yes. We've forgotten Krishna. Yes. And because of we... our desires and karma. Because of our desires yes. and yes. Yes. Based on our desire, we have this desire to to pretend we are God. The Lord, and that's why we forget him. But once we are put here in the material world, then we are just covered. Our original knowledge is covered. Otherwise, we are chit, right? Full of knowledge. But it gets covered when we are put in this material atmosphere. Because, of the, because the desire to enjoy is so much. You know, if in, in the pure state, we will not be able to enjoy without Krishna. Because that's the natural state. So that is covered so that we can pretend to be God. The Lord is aloof from this, but when the same living entity engages himself in devotional service to the Lord, then he becomes attached to the service. This situation is called yuktam. For devotees, the Lord is present even in the material energy. This is the conceivable potency of the Lord. So why for the devotee, the Lord is present in the material energy? Because she is Krishna's energy. Krishna can, uses it to bring us to him or Krishna uses it to cover our vision of him. Why does he do that? Based on our desire. What is our desire? So the devotee wants to always be connected to Krishna. So the devotee can see Krishna even in the material world. The pure devotee. He's never separated from Krishna. And that's why he's like, wherever I go, it doesn't matter. Why? Because he's seen Krishna everywhere. He's seen Krishna, everything belonging to Krishna. He's remembering Krishna. He's in Vrindavan all the time. This is the inconceivable potency of the Lord. Someone may say, how, how, why, how? Well, Krishna can do anything. He's God. Material energy acts in the three modes of material qualities which produce the action and reaction of material existence. So how does she control us, this material energy? By the three modes of material nature. Yeah, and what she are the modes? Us. Passion, goodness, and ignorance. Yeah. And because of this, then what happens is we, we act in a certain way. Yes. Yeah, we, we are entangled. We, we are still here. We remain here. We act and then we we form more. We get more entangled by our desires and our karmas because we keep on behaving in those modes and then we get more and more entangled, mm -hmm. forgetting that we are a real form. We forget a real form. So and those who are not doing it. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. That's the reaction. Yes. So those who are not devotees become involved in such activities, whereas devotees who are dovetailed with the Supreme Personality of Godhead 
are freed from such action and reaction of the material energy. So, when we forget Krishna, our action reactions keep us in this material world. But the pure devotees, because their actions are only to please Krishna, they do not get a reaction that they need to be here in the material world. They can just go back to the spiritual world. The Lord is therefore described here with as Bhava Chiddam, one who can give deliverance from the entanglement of material existence. So even Brahmaji cannot get us out of this material world, you know. Lord Brahma is also, uh, he is the most powerful person within the universe. Our universe is controlled by Lord Brahma. Even he cannot get us out of this material world. And Durga Devi, she's not going to let us get out of here because she is uh, a servant of Krishna. She's following his orders. So who is going to get us out of here? It's Krishna. Only he can give orders to Durga Devi. Hey, don't act on this devotee. And then she can let us go. So she follows Krishna's orders. So it's like, like if we have to turn away from Krishna and turn to Krishna. <laughs> Is it it? Turn away from Krishna? From, I'm sorry. From Krishna. From Krishna. Krishna means desires and turn to Krishna. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. That's yeah. right. That's right. So yeah. that's what devotees, right? The pure devotees. Yeah. Done that. Yeah, that's right. But for us, it's so difficult to turn it's away from difficult. our desires. Yeah. Then what do we do? We have so many desires. Then what to do? Then we just begin to hear and chant. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. You know, for us, it's so we are so attached to our desires. You ask us to give us a gift. No, why? It's mine. You know. Then, but what to do? So we hear and chant. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> Varam Varaho Ambujana Bhapadayor. Varam Varaho Arha Ambujana Bhapadayor. Anantaram Twam Vayamanga Shishruma. Anantaram Twam Vayamanga Shishruma. My dear Dhruv Maharaj, son of Maharaj Uttanapad. We have heard that you are constantly engaged in transcendental loving service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is known for his lotus neighbor. You are therefore worthy to take all benedictions from us. Please, therefore, ask without hesitation whatever benediction you want from me. So Kuvera is so pleased that he's asking Dhruv Maharaj, you tell, ask me whatever you want. You know, imagine a, a powerful person Wealthy, powerful person asks, oh, what do you want? Then we can, we can ask him whatever our desires are. So this is what Kovera is asking. Kovera is also a devotee, as we were hearing, because he understands the position of Krishna perfectly. So how, what, how is the navel of Lord described? Lotus. It's lotus. Yes. Dhruv Maharaj, the son of King Uttanapad, was already known throughout the universe as a great devotee of the Lord, constantly thinking of his lotus feet. Such a pure, uncontaminated devotee of the Lord is worthy to have all the benedictions that can be offered by the demigods. He does not have to worship the demigods separately for such benedictions. Kuvera is the treasurer of the demigods and he is personally offering whatever benediction Dhruv Maharaj would like to have from him. So someone may worship Kuvera to get the benediction. 
after all, Kuvera is the treasurer of the demigods, so he can give a lot of riches. So somewhere, someone may want those riches and worship Kuvera for that. But here, Kuvera is by himself asking Guru Maharaj, what do you want from me? I'll offer it to you. Why? Why is he doing that? Because? Anyone? Because for devotees, whatever they do, everything is already given to them because he's a pure devotee. So he's already serving Krishna. So everything is given to them already because they are serving Krishna, the supreme, absolute truth. Yeah, so yes, because he's the pure devotees, they also get the, the respect and the benedictions from the demigods. The demigods also give that respect to the devotees and the benedictions to the devotees. They are happy. They are happy that this one, this is a pure devotee, he's serving Krishna. So they are happy with him. So they want to give him. You know, when you're happy with someone, we ask them, what do you want? Let me get it for you. So... The demigods are happy with the pure devotee, that the pure devotee is serving Krishna. And so they are saying, Yes, yeah, what can I do for you? What can I give you? Shla Bilva Mangal Thakur stated, therefore, that for persons who engage in the devotional service of the Lord, all material benedictions wait like maid servants. So Bilva Mangal Thakur, one of the great devotees, he's saying, Material benedictions are waiting like maid servants. Here, like Kuvera is also asking Guru Maharaj, what do you want I can give you? You know, the demigods are all waiting to give benedictions to the pure devotee. So Mukti Devi is just waiting at the door of the devotee to offer liberation or more than that at any time. To be a devotee is therefore an exalted position. To be a devotee is an exalted position. Simply by rendering transcendental loving service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one can have all the benedictions of the world without separate endeavor. So we may, there are 33 crore demigods. Then if we want to get their benedictions, we cannot serve them separately. We can serve Krishna. And they will give us all the benedictions. Because we are serving Krishna. Lord Kuvair said to Dhruva Maharaj that he had heard that Dhruva was always in Samadhi or thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord. In other words, he knew that for Dhruva Maharaj there was nothing desirable within the three material worlds. He knew that Dhruva would ask for nothing but to remember the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord constantly. So a devotee, he already has Krishna. So that's why he doesn't have any other material desire. Prabhupada, and Prabhupada is pointing out that Kuvair uh, knew that Dhru Maharaj is a pure devotee of the Lord. Pure devotee means no more material desires. He's, his consciousness is he's always thinking of the Lord. Constantly. So that's what he's going to ask him. And he's not going to ask him anything material. Hmm? One question. I'm just wondering, Lord Kuvera, he is a demigod, right? I mean, of Lord of the treasure. But how yeah. come his sons, Nala, Nala Kuvara and Mani Grieve, they were so degraded? Yeah, it happens. No? Sometimes sons of wealthy people can become degraded. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can happen, you know. Sometimes the wealth, we may get carried away by the wealth and beauty. We may become proud of it. So it's the material world after all. And he couldn't uh, instruct his sons? Yeah, he was not able to. Also, we have to try to understand that this is how they got the mercy of Narad Muni, which shows that how compassionate Narad Muni is. How compassionate yeah, he is. Because I see Narad Muni cursed them, right? He cursed them, but his curse was actually a yeah. benediction. benediction. Why was it a benediction? Because uh, Krishna came uh, and 
delivered them. Yeah, and also they could see Krishna's pastimes. Mm -hmm. And Krishna personally delivered them, personally spoke to them. Otherwise, just as being as Kuvir sons, they wouldn't have had that opportunity. The demigods are not able to see Krishna. Krishna is born. Some of the more powerful demigods are sometimes able to see Lord Vishnu, but not Krishna. And that's the reason when Devki was whole, having Krishna in the womb, all the demigods would come and mm. offer prayers. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for listening and enjoying it. Shimad Bhagavatam Kiche, Shlapu Arkiche, Gorbakta Vindiki, Hare Krishna.